Welcome back to Dylan of Age of Wonders 4, where we're dragging these nuts in the Watcher update. And then we'll go ahead and we're taunt this one as well. I really do love the way that the industrious cultures play. They're my kind of, uh, they're my kind of playstyle, very tanky. Let's push in hard. Let's do some damage to this caustic worm right there. Push in a little bit more. Wipe out a unit model. And then finally let's push it here, and then hopefully we can wipe out a unit model right there. I could do an attack, I think I will, to take down another one. That's a pretty good result. We got a bunch, a bunch of mana on hand. There's almost no reason not to make use of it. The Hunter Spider Matriarch is going to do a pretty good amount of damage, so... That is physical and blight. Getting stone skin would really buff our anvil guard right here, so let's do that. He'll be able to take that punishment from the Hunter Spider Matriarch a lot more effectively now than he would before. And getting so close to those chargey units really limits the amount of damage that they can do. Let's push our Dragon Lord in. Let's see if we can't get a sneaky little... Uh, we really can't. Let's go ahead and get some overdraws to eliminate the retaliation attacks on these caustic worms. Or straight up kill them, that's good too. And let's push in. Is this considered a large target? I don't think so. Let's push in maybe with the healthier. Three damage, nine damage. Now let's just take it right here. There we go. Now we can push the halberdier in, get some more damage, and then push the other ammo guard in to beat down on this caustic worm. Take a hit, attack with the dragon lord and then beat down with the Anvil Guard to finish it off, hopefully. Very good. Let's finish off this worm with the Nightmare. All that we have left now is a very low morale Hunter Spider Matriarch. I could throw down some more damage on it, but is a one unit model doing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. However, it's still taunted, which means that I should bolster enchant this Anvil Guard so that it only deals temporary hit point damage instead, which should be exactly what it does, yep. Alright, we're gonna charge in from behind here. So, one, two, three, let's back up to here and then hit it from behind. There we go. I'm not sure if that is more effective when you move. I think it is, but I've never tested it. Let's overdraw and just keep on overdrawing until it's dead. Well, if I could hit it, 70% chances, eh. I have had way too many experiences where I shoot people in my back. Let's shoot it again. Step forward, shoot again. Oh, killed it. Critical hit. Very good. And there we go. Pretty much minimal damage done to our forces. Let's go ahead and let's select our next ability for D's Nuts. I think Ancient Governor is a pretty good choice. Let's do that one for some more knowledge and city stability that's going to improve our city quite a bit. I doubt that that'll be enough for... Oh, it is actually enough for Stable. So now we get... Plus 5% production draft and food. Very good. Received a message. So Deez is happy about us not starting wars. I'm happy that she's happy. I think here we can push into the infestation. With the forces that we have on hand, we will still be in friendly domain. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's stop these Pyreborns. We should be able to do that very easily. Get some more experience. Yeah, unfortunately it looks like there is a limit. When you move, you don't actually get more damage, so that's a bit silly. You should be able to do things like cavalry run-bys where you move away and then you strike them again. I think that that should be in the game. But hey, whatever, it's their game. Super easy battle. Almost no damage whatsoever done to our units. And we got some more... Probably allegiance with these dudes. We could get a bunch of food. I actually kind of like that. A bunch of gold too, I like that too. Oh, a defender. I need to be reminded what a defender does exactly. I think it's a fetal unit, right? Yeah, this is fetal. Not too interested in a fetal unit. Oh, or a bunch of Imperium. Kind of hard to choose. A bunch of Imperium or one population. We do struggle with food. Or gold. I'll take the Imperium. The Imperium is just very valuable. With that Imperium, I'll go ahead and I'll immediately pick up Seafaring, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead, let's pick up Seafaring. We don't need more mana income. We've got plenty of mana at the moment. There's nothing else that we can spend our Imperium on currently. Now, my pioneers can move across the seas to find people. 
and more importantly, places to prospect. Found ourselves another underground passage as well as these mountains that can be used, but I got another pioneer over there to use those. Let's push that pioneer towards the underground passage, take a look down under. It's so hard to like click units on mountains, they need to work on that too, honestly. Uh, we can select another expansion. I think getting another farm makes sense. Getting the mana is not that big a deal, but there are another other farms available that are a good choice. So let's create the farm that will then allow us to build the estate hall once we have the money and we get done with the market. Should be getting attacked here by the infestation. And here he comes. Should be a pretty straightforward battle. We've kind of reached the point where we've gotten a decently solid army together. As long as we play pretty carefully, like I always do, it should be pretty rare for us to lose units. Especially with our ability to buff our defenses and whatnot. I always love when they stack up like this. I'd actually want to wait one turn though for them to come a little bit closer. But these hunter spiders can jump. Now let's stack up a little bit more. Move our arbalist down. Bring the halberdier around to the southeast. Let's pull back the Nightmare, it will put everybody else onto defensive posture. Yeah, let's go with that. We need to go ahead and bolster enchant this Anvil Guard, because he needs some temporary healing. We might get hit from the jumping spiders. Ah, they decided not to jump. Cool, fine by me. Have a nuke. All of you get slowed, very good indeed. This is where we push in with the Anvil Guards to refuse to give them the opportunity. Well, that may have been a mistake, actually. These are fighter units, not charge units. The Caustic Worm is the charge unit. That's okay. Place the Nightmare in position to get a good charge attack on the spiders here pretty soon. Push the Arbalist into position. Might want to keep my Dragon Lord in position because I'm probably going to get these spiders jumping behind my front line here in a second. We'll see how that goes, though. I definitely want to get more damage on the spiders because they'll dish out more damage onto my ammo guards. That is for sure. Good, I took out one unit model. I'm very happy about that. Let's take another shot and miss. That's okay. Take another shot. Got him. One unit down. So now their damage is significantly reduced. Caustic Worm right here can't really reach me. These spiders are not going to move anytime soon. So now the question is, what do I do? I could deal 30 physical damage to a target enemy unit. I think that makes a lot of sense. We might want to just deal some more damage to, say, one of the spiders. But I don't think that we can get below 33%. Let's go ahead and let's knock out one of these unit models right there. And we'll call that good. And see what they do. Ah, a bunch of shield walls. Very nice. Ooh, mobilization. Okay. Cool with that. Tiny amount of damage, although the Arbalists are getting hit kind of hard. So this is where we push back as hard as we can. Hit them with the overdraws. One more time. Let's see if we can take this guy out. We should be able to easily do that. Alright, good deal indeed. Let's get the charge attack coming in. Knock them out. And now let's get an overdraw on the back unit here. Take out another unit model. Very good. Might want to get a taunt going on this dude here. Let's do that. He is taunted. Let's finish off the spider. Got him. All we have left is the Halbert Deer here who cannot move. He has to go into defensive posture. Not a whole lot else that we can do with our Dragon Lord. Except maybe stay right here in case of a jumping attack. Let's just push him in a little bit closer and put him onto defensive mode. Or maybe Wand of Inversion. Let's Wand of Inversion this guy, why not? Let's see what he gets in response. He gets regeneration, cool. So now I need to do some healing or some straight up damage, one or the other. I can almost kill that hunter spider but not completely. I can really hurt the caustic worms behind them. I think no matter what happens here, somebody's gonna get hurt decently. Let's do some damage to this worm right here. Makes him a little bit less effective. And then hopefully we don't lose anybody in the resulting conflict. The hell was that? There's that jump. Yeah what was that? Caustic eruption. So it deals damage to enemy units in a 2 hex radius, okay. As long as nobody actually dies, we're okay. Let's kill you. There we go. 
And now I need to deal with this worm right here with some melee strikes. Let's finish him off with the nightmare. Let's push in closer with the anvil guard. Do some damage to this worm. Even more, please. Very good. We can overdraw this guy. Probably finish him off. Let's give it a shot. Got him. Now let's overdraw this guy repeatedly. We'll have a very hard time actually killing him anytime soon. That's okay, we'll just put this ammo guard into defensive posture. I don't have any casting points left to actually heal him, so he should be able to take that hit on this turn, but we'll see. Yep, we'll need to pull that ammo guard out, but we might not need to. Might be able to just overdraw this guy down. He does still have a retaliation attack, which means that he should have charge resistance of some kind. Let's go ahead and let's go for the flank attack. And we got him. Very good. Critical hit. Came kind of close to losing a unit, but we still pulled it off. We're still technically in friendly territory, so we get full healing as well. So now we got our first signature ability. Interesting. So dragons have aspects that they can choose. So picking any of these aspects increases our unit upkeep by 7 mana. Astral would give us Attunement, which gives us Fortune every time we cast a spell in combat. It also gives us 4 resistance, which is nice. Chaos would give us 10% damage per negative status effect on the target, up to 3 times. We don't really do a whole lot of debuffing of units. We also gain plus 50% morale. Materium gives us more crit hit chance, just flat, and more defense, which is never bad. Nature gives us more hit points as well as Watchful for another retaliation attack. Order gives us Faithful, which is cheaper unit upkeep, which is not bad, not bad. Dragons are expensive. This dude costs 30 gold right now, which would save us like 3 gold per turn. Not a whole lot, but it's something. And some more status resistance. And we can inflict Condemned. And then Shadow would give us Soul Drain, which could apply Soul Bound. And plus 30% damage against the units with low or lower morale. I think a good question here is what other line of affinities do we want to go down? They've definitely fixed it to where you want to focus more on certain affinities. Whereas before you could spread out much more effectively. A nature affinity wouldn't be a bad choice just to get, say, more food from farms. We're going to need that food. And nature has some pretty decent bonuses. Not a whole lot, but some pretty decent ones. Chaos is always good for going on the warpath and for making your armies cheaper. But Astral is always good for knowledge and spells. I don't think that we really want to go down the pathway of order. I don't think that we go down the pathway of nature. So the nature aspect gives us 20 hit points, which I would definitely like, and watchful, which I would definitely appreciate. Let's take that. So now we're up to 120 hit points, and one nature affinity and we now have some kind of glue and we now have some kind of green glow going on with us what are we going to pick up for our next skill could get dragon breath we have a lesser dragon breath at the moment i like the idea of getting the dragon breath where you have range whereas the cone you have to do in a cone directly touching you and a line it has to be directly touching you as well However, we could use it after moving, whereas with the Comet Dragon Breath, we have to stand in place. But we've got that that uh, Blizzard Wand as well, which is very good. I think I like the Comet Dragon Breath. Let's pick that one up instead. I think what we do here is we push the infestation immediately and try to clear it. We did get ourselves a Gargoyle, so we could probably summon a Gargoyle to help out. Rune of Industry would grant non-industrious units bolstering, which I'm not too concerned with. Enchanted Crow Companions provision range and still fairy chant is okay. I guess we'll go with Rune of Industry next. We'll go ahead, let's start working on rebuilding these farm ruins ASAP. Another rule is started negotiating Rampart. Let's take a look at Rampart. All of them are well behind us, we should not lose them. Let's push our hero forward. Push the nightmare right behind it. The gargoyle. I guess you have to actually build it? Yeah, you have to actually build it. Okay. In that case, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. We've got really good odds against this stack right here. I'll take this fight. Should be pretty straightforward. There is a skirmisher here, or a sunderer. Now I am going to want to keep this damaged anvil guard kind of safe. 
We've got our little defensive posture going up here. So now I can do 26 damage or 24 damage and slow these dudes down. I'd like to slow them down primarily. So let's give them a little bit of a nuke and take care of that. I slowed most of them, not all of them. Killing the Sunderer is kind of important to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the Anvil Guard right up next to it. Push in behind it, get it from the side, knock the living crap out of it, and then hit it. Maybe with the Anvil Guard, or I could taunt it straight up. Let's just taunt him. Got him. Let's push in with the Arbalist. Let's do some more damage to the Caustic Worm to try to remove unit models and lower the damage output of it. Let's put the Halberdier right here. Let's put the Anvil Guard right to his side. Let's bring up the damage Anvil Guard on that side. Bring the Arbalist over here, Arbalist over here. Get some shots down range. Ideally on, let's try to hit the Sunderer. We might be able to actually finish this dude off, but will. Very good. Everyone else is going to go into defensive mode, but I want to make sure that I heal this dude. Because he's going to get hit, pretty much guaranteed. The Nightmare might get hit too by the charging units though. We got immobilized by quite a few people. Ah, they went for the Anvil Guard, not the Nightmare. Except for this one. It's fine by me. Now we can Dragon Breath and hit all these units right here, or these units. Let's hit these units. And now we should be able to finish. There we go. Let's overdraw crossbow, kill this one. Let's see. Let's go around. Ooh, what is this? That's on fire. Okay, I can't do that. I mean, I could, but it would hurt. Let's overdraw a crossbow with a spider. Just a graze. Okay. And now let's hit this one again. I should be able to push in now, except I'm immobilized. Right, right. This guy does not have a retaliation strike, which means that I can push around and finish off with a charge strike. I'm going to do that. Take down the spider. Now I push for the Anvil Guard. I would like to taunt, but I can't. Let's just do some damage instead. Not a whole lot, but it is something. Let's do a Rock Blast on the spider here to remove a unit model. And I think that we have to call it good right there. They'll get some minor responses, but not a whole lot. Of course, they always go for the ranged units using the jump. But this should be pretty much the end of these troops. Let's overdraw from behind. Very good indeed. And let's smack the crap out of them with our Dragon Lord. Uh, they're fleeing. Do I let them flee? I don't think so. Well, actually, in this case, this is a neutral army. This army will not come back to bite me. I will let them flee. I don't want to get the event where, uh... It's kind of a negative outcome if you're too bloodthirsty. By not allowing your enemies to run from you. So we took care of that. Let's go ahead and let's finish the small... Well, hold on. Tier 4... We have some damaged units. It might spawn a retreating unit or a, um, a patrolling army. Let's just pull back. Let's get some healing first and we'll finish off that monster down on the next turn. I think that makes the most sense. We could rush this Arbalest. I'm going to do that now. I don't have enough money for anything else, but we'll get some more food. That's all right. In terms of Imperium, what would I like to spend it on, if anything? I think that I'd like to spend it on getting another population and gauntlet. We have one turn left on the city above ground. I could also spend it on making city structures cost 20% less gold to build. I think that's a reasonable choice. Let's do that. We are very very big on building our buildings. And we get a free creature. A lesser magma spirit. Very nice. Lesser magma spirit, please go check out this food over here. See if there's anything there just hiding. There is not. Cool. Free food. Let's take a look. So we're sailing northeast. Looks like there might be some mountains maybe over here. There's a big old ancient wonder right there. There's mountains over here definitely. Some over here is not a whole lot. Going underground is going to be a better place to grab more prospects. Oh, this is occupied on the other side. No, it's not. Forbidden Shrine. Okay. Well, what is this? All right, Default is here. Let's check out this gold. He's probably going to pick that up, surely, right? We can actually do some excavations, too, with these dudes. A Godir's Aid. So this is one of my Godir from another game. So they offer to join us. I don't see why not. 
This is a pretty decent mage hero that I like to use. Let's pick her up. She joins us for free, surprisingly enough. Let's push her in, close as we can get her, and let's see what we can actually give her for some weaponry. So right now she has a Staff of Spirit, which means that she can blind people. I could give her a Staff of Decay for a Death Blast. Decay makes it so that you can't do regeneration. Satirical Orb makes you get Despair sometimes. Not all the time. Potentially 30 damage though. Right now we can do maybe 16 damage. Staff of Decay is really nice though. Let's go with a Staff of Decay. Let's give her a crown for some more resistance. And then some leather armor for some more defense. Can't give her a mount because she has a staff. Could give her a ring of protection for resistance and defense. I think that makes a good deal of sense. They like to target these people quite a bit. A wand of provocation so we can inflict taunted. I don't want to do that. Poison darts makes a little bit of sense. Let's do that. And let's confirm that. It's going to cost us some gold per turn, but that's okay. She's pretty well decked out. Now we should be able to bring down this stack very, very easily. So all I got here is two Furies, which have rock on them as well. Earthkin. So somebody else has gone Tomb of the Rock. So two Furies, a young Caustic Worm, and a Hunter Spider Matriarch. Should be easy peasy. Mm, at some point in time, our dragon became flying. I'm not sure when that happened. I mean, it makes sense that he could fly, but he couldn't move through the units before for some reason, so I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I just didn't notice. But yeah, this battle has been extremely easy. There we go. No actual damage taken. And we cleared the infestation, got ourselves some boots of freedom. Very fast movement, swift immunity to slow to immobilize. Another. Wand of Blizzards, and a Fire of Fire and Mount, plus some food and gold. I really like those Wands of Blizzard, so let's actually go and give those to our other hero. She'll get a Wand of Blizzards, as well as some Boots of Freedom, I think. Yeah. Next up, we're going to clear the Mana Node over here and take care of that ASAP. And we have met Zethil Silverleaf. Minus 195 relations, I'm not going to give this one some gold, they're a authoritarian diplomat. So they like people that have stronger militaries, they don't like empires with lots of alliances. We should be okay with this person for the most part, they are good with a large variety of affinities as well. And we've actually found their capital city already. Ashwall has been founded, very good. I think our best choice here is going to be... Probably a workshop so that we can get some buildings rolling quicker. Not sure I want to start building units up here quite yet. Let's check on Gauntlet first. I definitely want to build more buildings here all the time. Building a stonemason would be very nice. To boost that we would need two farms. Which we're going to have here in a second. So let's do a stonemason and we'll get some of our gold back. We cannot start on anything else at the moment. I can assign Wraith to Ashwall to give a bunch, a bunch of draft production. Wow. I will actually want to build some units up here then, as well as a bunch of gold. We do have access to apparently a new empire skill, but I don't have an interest in upgrading a city cap or building roads yet, or ever probably. Press play the champion I'm not too interested in, and eventually we're going to get metropolitan society, but not yet. We need more imperium for all of that anyway. A rivalry has been declared against us, probably by, yep, the Crusading Croaker. Yep, cool bro. He's underground. No, he's not. He's, up, he's above ground. He's across the ocean. So as I thought, he is to the east. So he's well away from us. He's not really a major threat. However, what is this? Someone else. So Sundrin declared a rivalry to fall to you. Alright, I'm not going to spend money on declaring rivalries. How is he in comparison to us? We are still rank 9 in basically every way except magic and expansion. He is rank 5. His military is rank 7 though, which is just slightly stronger than us. So I'm not too concerned about him. I do believe that this dragon person might be underground though. Possibly down here. 
Well, maybe not down there. Where are they from? They're from the south somewhere. Probably on the other side of the dragon's lair. We're not getting along very well with them either. We're not getting along very well with them either. They actually declared a rivalry with us as well, I think. Yeah. Declared by the dragon people. Alright. We've been insulted by the frog people. Okay. And then... Some more happiness with us. Cool, cool. We got... Pact of Loyalty with Rampart, which means that we're making pretty good progress towards actual vassalage. We'll have them in 8 turns. We might need to put some Imperium into them. Enioch is kind of pushing towards them as well. Fortunately, it looks like there might be some decent chances that we'll be going to war with the Dragons as well as the Riveters. So this Mana Node, the Army Guardian, looks like it wants to leave... I can either kill them all, gain some evil alignment, or be good, which I think makes sense in this case. I could also spend some mana and gain an Inferno Hound. They're pretty decent units. Not particularly amazing though. I say I let them go, gain some good alignment, gain the mana from that mana node, very good. Looks like they fixed that little issue where if you got rid of the army without attacking it, you had to move on to the mana node or the node in order to get the yield. So that is good. We have another population that we can spend in Gauntlet. I think in this case it's going to be best to get another gold mine rolling as soon as possible. And we need to clear out these troops ASAP. To accomplish that, we'll move our armies in that direction. We cannot engage them this turn, but we can engage them next turn. We need more gold so that we can build more buildings and more units faster. Uh, I don't think we even got that boost because these farm ruins weren't repaired yet. That's too bad. That is too bad. We might want to get a library. I think that makes sense. Just go ahead and get it done with. We're kind of falling behind on research, I'm sure. I would not be surprised. Ashwall is still working on a workshop, which is fine by me. Do I want to spend my Imperium on any upcoming skills is a good question. Not too interested in more mana at the moment. I would like to get Metropolitan Society, but it'll be quite some time before our cities will all be touching. Special Province Improvements granting gold would not be terrible. Not really seeing much that I genuinely want, though. Another Whispering Stone might not be a terrible choice. We'll have that available in one turn. Let's wait for the Whispering Stone. We'll disembark just south of Pharos and move to find out what this Ancient Wonder is, as well as to search all these juicy mountains. Another wand of blizzards. Amazing. We got the Ruin of Industry, which means that we can now pick ourselves another tomb. We might want to go for a nature tomb to get more nature affinity. Or we could maybe go with the Tomb of Evolution. Which does have some interesting things that were added in the Dragon Dawn DLC. But I haven't really gone nature yet. So the research has also been restructured in the Watcher update so that every tomb that you pick gets more expensive than the previous tomb regardless of what tier it is. So you're actually incentivized to just move up in tiers unless you really really want something from the earlier tiers. I don't think Tomb of Beasts is the way for us to go. Tomb of Roots seems kind of interesting. Getting Poison Arrows is nice. Blight Blades is pretty good. Healing Roots is okay. It does get regeneration. Vine Prisons is still pretty funny against the AI as far as I know. And Entwined Thralls or an alright skirmisher unit. Let's go for the Tomb of Roots. I've never gone down nature before. Why not? May not be the best choice. Maybe the Tomb of Enchantment would have been a better choice, but that's okay. I think in this case going for Poison Arrows makes the most sense. Getting a base 30% chance of inflicting poison is a pretty, pretty good choice. Which does 8 Blight damage each turn, but it doesn't affect ethereal or undead units. Blight Blades is alright, but it's really good in combination with Poison arrows. So let's go with poison arrows first. I'm gonna use this lesser magma spirit to try to scout the south and hopefully not get murdered by this dragon here. The young obsidian dragon. Very cool. I want to find out where this dragon person lives exactly. We built that library and gauntlet. Next up, what would I like to build? Probably a mint. A mint gives us plus 20 gold income, which is very nice. We're gonna need all the gold income that we can get to build all the buildings that we just love to build. 
However, we could build more production using these special province improvements. An Arbalist would give us plus 5 food and mana, and for every adjacent province in our domain with Forester Swamp, we'd get more for we'd get more food and more mana. So we could build it, say like on this province right here. Thanks so much for watching Dealing With It. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like would really help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.